Abrogation refers to Allah's practice of canceling certain verses in the Quran and providing better verses. But this is a strange practice, since the Quran is supposedly Allah's eternal speech. Why would some parts of Allah's eternal speech be worse than other parts? In response to my recent video about the abrogation of Surah 2, verse 256, there is no compulsion in religion, a Muslim commented, I'm Muslim. I always hated the idea of abrogated verses in the Quran, and why would God contradict himself? I don't believe in abrogated verses. But I noticed a tune of hate in you. I hope you seek the truth, not loyalty to your ideas. And I'm sorry if the media won't give Christians a chance to speak without called Islamophobic. I think that is one of the reason why the West hate Islam. Why do they make it so easy? All right, Ibn Said, so you recognize that there's a problem with the doctrine of abrogation. You recognize that if Allah is canceling certain verses and replacing them with other verses that contradict the original verses, then Allah's eternal speech contains contradictions. Your solution is to reject the doctrine of abrogation. You say that you don't believe in it. But in rejecting the doctrine of abrogation, you just became an apostate, my friend. Congratulations, let me show you how you just left Islam. The doctrine of abrogation comes directly from the Quran. Let's read Surah 2, verse 106. We'll read a few different translations so that we'll be sure to understand it. None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Knowest thou not that God hath power over all things? Whatever a verse, revelation, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Know you not that Allah is able to do all things? Whatever communications we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring one better than it or like it. Do you not know that Allah has power over all things? And for whatever verse we abrogate or cast into oblivion, we bring a better or the like of it. Knowest thou not that God is powerful over everything? Whatever verse we may annul or cause thee to forget, we will bring a better one than it or one like it. Dost thou not know that God is mighty over all? Whatever verses we cancel or cause thee to forget, we bring a better or its like. Knowest thou not that God hath power over all things? So Allah abrogates or cancels certain verses and replaces them with similar verses or better verses. Ibn Said, you've already said that you hate the doctrine of abrogation, which is somewhat ironic since you later accuse me of hate. But the only one hating abrogation here is you, Ibn Said. I absolutely love it, because it helps me expose the Quran. All we have to do is look at the historical background of Surah 2, verse 106. We find the historical background in Al-Wahiri's Asbab al-Nazul. Nothing of our revelation, even a single verse, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring in place one better or the like thereof. Surah 2, verse 106. The commentators of the Quran said, the idolaters said, do you not see that Muhammad commands his companions with something and then forbids them from the same and commands them to the exact opposite? One day he says something and the following day he retracts it. The Quran is nothing but the speech of Muhammad who has invented it. It is a speech that contradicts itself. Allah, exalted is he, therefore revealed this verse. And when we put a revelation in place of another, Surah 16, verse 101, and also, nothing of our revelation, even a single verse, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring in place one better or the like thereof. So, the pagans noticed that Muhammad kept contradicting himself. He would walk out one day and tell his followers, Allah commands you to do X. 
Then he would walk out the next day and tell them, Allah commands you not to do X. The pagans mocked him for this. They said, there's no way this is the eternal speech of Allah. It doesn't make any sense for Allah's eternal speech to contradict itself like this. This is nothing but the speech of Muhammad who has invented it. And Allah responded by revealing that when he abrogates a verse, he brings something similar or something even better, which does absolutely nothing to answer the objection. His eternal speech still contains contradictions. Notice, Ibn Said, you agree with the pagans on this one. I agree with the pagans on this one. They were right. It makes no sense for Allah's eternal speech to be filled with contradictions. This is yet another reason that Muhammad was the most obvious false prophet in history. Of course, Surah 2, verse 256, there was no compulsion in religion, was eventually abrogated, and the pagans were forced to convert to Islam. They were forced to follow a man that they knew was a false prophet. But there's no sword at our throats, Ibn Said. We're free to reject the Quran, since we both agree that it's not the word of God. We're free to expose Muhammad as the hopelessly moronic false prophet that he was. You've already admitted that you find the doctrine of abrogation completely ridiculous, Ibn Said. Now you should admit that you've abrogated your belief in Islam. Where is Allah? Where is Allah? This is such a foolish question. Where is Allah? Where is Allah is an extremely important issue. Where is Allah? Where is Allah? This is such a foolish question. Where is Allah? Where is Allah is an extremely important issue. He is over his throne. Over his throne. Over, over, over his throne.